Hey guys, what's up? This is your girl Madeline Berry here with Glory Attic Chronicles. We are continuing our study on the armor of God in spiritual warfare this week. And uh, the topic is the shield of faith. When we're in chapter 13 of Rick Renner's book called Dress to Kill. And um, we're just going to jump right into it. I'm not going to take a long time. just going to get this in and out and, um, and, and get you on about your day. So uh, we're reading from Ephesians 6, 16 today. And it says, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Um, this is important because a shield of faith um, was one of the elements of the armor that was... Uh, connected to the loin belt of truth. And uh, one of the first things Rick does is in this chapter, he talks about that connection between the loin belt of truth and the shield of faith and how without um, the loin belt, the soldier would not have anywhere to hang his shield whenever he wasn't using it. So, you know, just imagine a, a soldier having nowhere to put his shield. He could put it down and you know, not really be able to keep uh, keep tabs on it or whatever. And so um, the same way and what it represents, the loin belt, remember we talked about the loin belt of truth, it represents the logos or written word of God and how uh, important the connection is between the word of God and your faith. And, um, you know, in, in Romans it, it says, uh, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So uh, there is already a connection and a dependence uh, on your, of your faith on the word of God and your ability and consistency in hearing it um, and allowing it to begin to just talk back to you because the word of God is alive. It's, it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And um, that, that living word will start to transform you and then your faith starts to um, develop and you step out into areas that you know, you didn't know about, or you just believe and stand strong on the things that you 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 knew, but you didn't have the uh, the the substance to stand on. So the word gives you substance. In Hebrews one uh, eleven one talks about faith being substance of things that are um, hoped for and evidence of things that not, that aren't seen. So um, the word of God um, gives you the footing or the the foundation or the the um, the landing spot for whatever it is that you're believing God for. So I'm just really, really excited about um, you understanding the connection between the Word of God and your shield of faith because they work together intricately. One of uh, Rick's um, quotes that he posted was, the presence or absence of faith is determined by the presence or absence of God's Word. Faith and the word of God are inseparable. Then he said something else. He said, faith is designed to be out in front where it can completely cover you in every situation of life. And when he was talking about this, it was really important because, you know, um, living by faith is something that I think um, people who know me know my faith. And not necessarily know that I'm a Christian and know that I'm, you know, you know, good little whatever who's just going to go to church and be a good girl. But they, they see my faith by the actions that I take. And that's almost like me taking my armor or my shield of faith out and making sure it's the first thing that you see when you see me. Because the word of God that, that I live and rely on is so deeply instilled in me that my faith just comes out. It's like, you know, I want it, I want my life to be an evidence of God in the earth today, you know, um, to, to believe and stand with him, to agree with him, to do the things that he wants to do, um, through me, you know? And so that's how I choose to live. And that's what I, I want to be seen. I want, when you see me, I want you to see him because ultimately the word of God is the story about Jesus Christ the the savior of the world so um it should be out front um he also talked about how um the the shield of faith 
had um had leather it was covered in in, in leather and layers of leather and so um in order to make sure it was going to stand up in battle every morning the soldiers had to take this ointment or this oil and um saturate their shields in this in this uh, in this ointment or this oil to keep the the leather or treat the leather if you have leather seats in your car you know if you don't treat that leather throughout the year like in the summer times or, or in the summertime when it when it when the heat hits it it could start to crack if there's no moisture in it and if you don't uh, properly apply the the treatment that the oil needs to stay in a, a healthy position and so the same thing would happen with the the shields of the of the soldiers and so the next thing was um, they would soak it in water too it would soak it in water because um, whenever uh, they were coming up against enemies they would literally set um, arrows on fire and if the soldiers uh, uh, if the soldier's shield was not uh, soaked in water, then when it hit the shield, it would burst into flames. Since it's soaked in water, it just extinguishes the, the, the flame. And so uh, whenever the enemy's talking about, you know, the fiery darts of the enemy, the, the shield will, will quench the fiery darts of the enemy, you know, that's why, you know, that, that it, he was being very literal, but very, it was a, it's a spiritual connection to something that they were doing in the natural. And so, um, in one of the quotes, he said, uh, faith that is ignored becomes hard, stiff and brittle. And if you can imagine a, a soldier, soldier going into battle with a, uh, a, a, a shield that is, hard and stiff and brittle you know the first at the first blow that thing could break in half and he'd be you know toast or meat i don't know anyway so um it just was not a good situation if you did not care for your shield of faith and so um i, I just really those are like some of the main points there is just so much more in that chapter about faith um, and as a faith kid I encourage you to go in there and read it there's so much you talk about um, the faith um, having faith to to um, to step into alignment with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ now you can stand your own uh, with your own shield um, and hold you know and hold off however many you need to, uh, but if you have the whole army coming up against you, it would help you if you had brothers and sisters in agreement with you to link shields with you so that you could fight together. And so he was talking about how um, all of these shields had little hooks on uh, each side so that uh, whenever there was like serious conflict and the, the soldiers needed to unite front, <clears throat> unite the front and advance together, they would stand with their shield up and wait for the next person on each side to come and link their shields into those hooks on the side so that they could walk in unison together. And they would just start in the same pace and move forward together so that to the enemy, all they see is this moving wall of shield, you know, moving wall of faith coming to take the territory back from them. And so... Um, that's what that faith looks like. And in unison with uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ, remember last uh, a couple of weeks ago when I was talking about the breastplate of um, righteousness, you know, we were, if we continually work together as a unit, a single body, um, we should make each other, uh, uh, each other shine. And in doing so, we um, uh, advanced each other. So take that word. Connected to this one where you have not not only are you rubbing up against each other to make each other glisten and shine brighter, but now your shields are, are linked and you're moving forward together because there's something in the next season for everybody. You know, nobody needs to get left behind. So make sure you keep your, your armor oiled up with the anointing of God, Holy Spirit. You ask him, just give me a fresh anointing. Fill me afresh with your presence. You know, it, it got, the Bible says be filled with the Holy Spirit. But, you know, that, that's not a one-time thing. 
You can do that every single day, however many times a day. You can ask for a fresh refilling of the Holy Spirit. But guess what? You need to use what you get. So as you get in filled and filled up more with the presence of God uh, in your times of, 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 uh, of seeking him daily and, you know, uh, oiling your shield, basically, and, and soaking it in water, the, the water is the word of God, you know, wash it with the water uh, of the word and you putting that anointing on it, that oil, the oil of Holy Spirit on it. In your, in your private time, that is going to be demonstrated when you go out and people are going to see your faith. So um, that is going to be like the nutshell version of the, the Shield of Faith message. Um, I want to wish you a very blessed 2014. I really do believe that 2014 is going to be one of your most memorable years for all of your life. Um, it, it will put you, if, you're, if you've been getting yourself into alignment, you know, last year in 2012, 2011, and leading up to here, there is something so significant happening in the body of Christ. I can't even express it fully because I, I my expectation is so high for next year so I just want to encourage you to to um, to get spend some time today uh, listening to God um, as he talks to you about you know what next year looks like you'll hear different things from different people in terms of what they're hearing from God uh, about next year but I encourage you to get in God's face for yourself and um, what they say should actually just be confirmation of what he said to you and he might actually tell you something else more specific to you about you that um, you could share with somebody else who he kind of you know who you kind of feel like God wants to say that to also um, because, you know, everything you get is not just for yourself. So um, have an amazing, happy new year. 2014 is going to be an amazing year. And um, I actually I'm going to post some stats about Glory Addicts and, and the, the podcast and everything. So stay tuned if you're connected with us on social media. Um, I'll be posting it out on uh, Facebook and Twitter, uh, probably Pinterest also, just to kind of let you know what's going on with us. And I'm looking forward to continuing this lesson into the next year. Um, and so I'm signing off from 2013. And I'll see you again in 2014. Happy New Year. May God's greatest blessings be manifested in your life in 2014 as you walk through doors that are swinging open wide, doors of opportunities that you uh, have dreamt about and that are, are being made real in your life in the next year. So uh, I pray blessings on you now in Jesus name and peace out. All right.